Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And today we're gonna talk about how do you program uh, Christmas lights to music? I, I totally just maybe butchered the title there, but but basically what I wanna do here is, you know, we've been talking about different parts and kind of getting started in this hobby over the last month or two. And now I wanna just give you a basic practice example here in the computer to show you how all this stuff really can work together and how it's not too complicated. So behind me, what I've done is I just grabbed some of my snowflakes. This is actually, um, I think, the oldest prop that I have in my show, uh, these Boscoyo Chroma Flakes. And, um, and they're hanging out. Um, one of them is a pixel that's doing some funky stuff. You, I think it's out of the camera, um, but that's fine. Um, they work. And, uh, and we've got them hooked up to my Falcon F48 just because, again, that's what I have out here in the studio. That's what I've had hooked up for a while. Um, it's, it's the old version, but uh, it doesn't matter. Any new control is going to work the same way. And, and what I want to do is literally show you the whole setup here and how to get a basic thing rolling and kind of answer uh, some of those things that I see people ask all the time. You know, kind of give you like, hey, these are things that people ask a lot and you really don't need to worry about it kind of stuff. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is set up your controllers in X lights. Now, if you have connected it to your computer and it's in the same IP address range, and we're not gonna cover what that means right now, um, as your computer, you can go ahead and hit discover and it'll actually come and show up. See, um, that's actually a stage lighting device that I have going on. Um, and it should have found my Falcon F48 and like all good things, oh. I didn't plug it in. One second. Yes, it is important to actually have it plugged in on your network um, for the basics. So now we hit discover, boom. Okay, now it shows up the F48, it's the only one we're using today. Um, and so I'm actually gonna delete this stage lighting device that's hanging out here. I'm also getting used to the new dark mode for Windows for x -Lite. so if this looks a little different, uh, that's because we're in dark mode on Windows, it's quite nice. And I'm gonna hit save right here. Okay, you actually don't have to do this first. I just chose to because I think it makes sense logically. Now, we need to bring in our props, okay? That's always the next step in x -Lights. And again, this is like a brief overview, you know, kind of show you how things are done, kind of help you understand uh, how this actually isn't that complicated and, and uh, it's within reach to make an animated light show. Um, but this is not covering all the details. This isn't like a step-by-step, -step, here's how to make your first show tutorial. Uh, I just want to put that out there because I know people will be like, hey, why would you skip this step? So next thing we do is we go to our models. So there's a lot of different models for different things in here. Um, for these though, they're gonna be a downloaded model because they are from Boscoyo Studio. They fit that particular shape of corrugated plastic, which means they have it in the download section here. So I will go to snowflakes and hopefully remember what it is. It's a two foot snowflake, I know that. Is it, uh, the good thing is they have pictures in here. That one, that's the one, okay. And 48, yeah, that's the one. Insert model, so now we've got one, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and control C, copy, paste. So I basically have two sideways here, and then I have three and four under it, okay. Um, again, that's not really how it would look on your house, but it gives you an idea. It's just something to work with. Uh, you'll notice here in the numbering, x always the first one, is just the name of the product itself. You can always rename these, um, but then they automatically, when you copy and paste, they'll add a dash two, dash three, dash four. So if you then go in and do a dash one, it is, uh, oops, extra space there. It keeps things nice and orderly and easy to read. Okay, now the next thing to do, and there's multiple ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it, is I'm gonna hit save, control S, or save down here. And I'm gonna go back to controllers, and I'm gonna press visualize. Now notice here, I can't press visualize right now, because we've gotta fill out a little bit of information for the visualizer to be able to work. Now the visualizer, as you'll see in a second, is a awesome, awesome, awesome tool. In x -Lights, it makes things that were previously really number crunchy, um, just visual and simple, um, but it has to know what controller you have. 
So when it did the discovery, it found out that it was an F-48 from Falcon, um, but it or that was the the name, but um, but it didn't match it up with the type. That might just be because it's an older F-48, um, and I say older, like, it's, I don't know, did I buy it in, like, 2018, 2019? Like, it's not that old. Um, but in this hobby, with how fast things have moved in the past years, that is old. Um, and I love auto layout, auto size, full X lights control. Um, I recommend leaving on all that auto magic stuff unless you have a good reason not to. Um, if you're new to this, just leave it on. It will help you um, as long as as long as you're consistent, basically, and all your controllers leave that on, and you don't try to like manually override things. It works really well. Okay. Um, it knows the IP address, and then all it wants is the start universe. Uh, so I'm just going to start that at 1. It should figure that out with full x Lights control. And then we can hit visualize. So now, visualizer is out here. And this is all the ports on my F48. So the F48 has 48 individual pixel ports on it. Um, your controller will vary. And then also for serial ports, these are DMX ports for moving headlights uh, and other DMX lights, fog machines, fobble machines, stuff like that. Okay, so we've got those. And uh, so the next thing to do is you just grab these guys. You see their names right there. They're so nice. Um, and I just go one is on pixel port one. I know plugged in first. Two is plugged into it. So I overlap it a little here, see how it highlights. So now two, if I mouse over it, I'll see it is there. Then on pixel port two, I plugged in three and four. Um, it doesn't have to be symmetrical like this. I could have gone to port three with this next one. It's all about how your show is laid out and, and some other considerations that, again, is beyond the scope of this video. Um, you also have the ability, this is cool, you can adjust the box size to make it a little easier to read stuff, um, which is great if you're trying to see the full text or just see a lot of stuff. Um, and font size as well can help you with that. So that's, those are some great tools in there just to, to make it work a little bit better for you, um, etc. So once you do that, now we can go ahead and press Upload Output. And this is the cool, darn coolest thing that X-Lights does, okay? This this blows my mind every time I do it. And I know it's just normal now. But this literally goes in there, goes into that controller sitting on the floor over there. And it uploads all these settings. Because in pixel lighting, typically, your controller has a file and it, it has information in it that tells it what port everything's on. And then it gets information uh, through a variety of ways from, from X lights or from your, your show controller like FPP, um, and, and they're able to talk. Um, but it has to know what everything's plugged into. And the way that it typically knows that is <clears throat> by uploading the output. Now it used to be, I'll hit open here and get a web browser window. It's on my other screen here. It used to be that you would log in here, and, and let me tell you, in the stage lighting industry where I come from, this is still how you do it generally. Um, so you would go in here, and you would go to string ports, and you would set up each one of these. So you would set type, you'd set up the start channel, you basically would look at, you would go to your layout view here, and all this information would be here in your start channel, end channel, port number, and you would enter all that stuff right here, okay, manually. So it's like you did it twice, right? But now, um, and honestly for a few years, um, you could just do that in X lights, hit upload output, and literally, as far as configuring your controller, the only thing you have to log into it for is your initial setup to set the IP address. And a lot of times on many of these controllers, um, like the F48s have an LCD screen, the experience lights and dragging controllers and others uh, have a built-in Wi-Fi. Often you can log in without pulling up a regular web browser, you know, hit the QR code on your Dragon controller or your your mat or your experience lights controller, um, use an LCD. You can program in the IP address, never open the web page. Never, ever. Isn't that mind blowing? I mean if you're new to this you might be like, David, I, I really don't care. Um, but for the rest of us, it's really stinking cool and I think uh, we can't forget that. So then I'll hit save here because it wants me to because I made some changes. Um, so now everything's good. Everything's hunky dory. Now we get to start sequencing. So the sequencer is where we go ahead and we start applying effects to lights and groups of lights, okay? And that's a step I missed here. So before we start a sequence, I'm just gonna go here and select all four of these. 
right click create group from selections given a name such as flakes um, I could also go in here and when I have the group selected down here I can bring in or pull out different models okay and save it onto the sequencer so this is where we make the magic happen so now I'm gonna press new sequence uh, you can choose musical where you're gonna choose an audio file to bring in that's gonna determine the length of the sequence and it's also going to appear in the top here and be able to play uh, for the sake of brevity and just making a simple tutorial, I'm just going to do an animation. It's literally the same thing. It just by uh, auto automatically the the uh, the standard setup is that it's a 30 second sequence, but you can change that. Um, and I will go 20 frames per second. You can get on YouTube and argue with people about uh, whether that's right or not, but it's what I do. And then press quick start. So now we see here in the sequencer a timeline, basically. So left to right is time. It's a 30 second sequence right now. And then vertically, we have all of our groups in individual models. Okay. Um, and so the basic gist is you go up here and you grab effects. Uh, one of the ones that people love to test with is bars. Uh, people love butterfly too. And so you can see here in our preview, when I pull this bars onto here, and play it, it's running that bar effect across all of the fixtures. Maybe I take it and I, I make it run left, okay? So it runs it across all of these fixtures, all of these uh, different models. Now, there's a couple things uh, you do want to remember when you are thinking about uh, setup, okay? And that is that your layout in the layout tab needs to match what you did in real life. Okay, so for example, these ones, uh, these particular snowflakes, have the start and end of the string of lights at the bottom of the model. Thus behind me, I have oriented them that way. So the plugs come out the bottom, that way I know they match what's going on here. Okay, because x lights is what we call a pixel mapping program. So the way you lay it out on the layout has to match how you set it up, and then things play really fluidly. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is press this button, Output to Lights. And what we're gonna see here, I know it's a little bit overexposed, is we actually see that effect running across our lights. We see that that one snowflake on the ladder is hanging a little bit crooked, yeah. That's better. And so now we, we literally see, you know, exactly what we've got here in X lights on that screen. For example, I could select this and just place it on the first flake, right? Just on the second flake, just on the third flake, just on the fourth flake. And so that's really the basic gist of how all this stuff works. You just, as you build a show, you end up, you know, as you build a light show, you end up getting more of these props and you end up doing more time or, or bringing in music most often to make your Christmas light display. But at the end of the day, this basic process is how it gets done. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you want more, be sure to subscribe here to Learn Christmas Lighting. That's number two. Number one. Number two, um, if you are looking for the step-by-step -step definitive updated every year guide to making a great Christmas light display, we've got it inside the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. Our step-by-step -step course is proven. We've had hundreds of people follow it and uh, they're able to make a show which they wouldn't have been able to figure out on their own because it is so darn confusing if you try. I've been there. Um, and number three, when you do need pixels and you need light show stuff, we are beginning to stock uh, not only our DMX moving heads, which we've always had uh, for the past few years, but also Matos Designs Pixels. Why Matos Designs? Because we found that across the board, um, they're priced really competitively to everybody else's pixels. Maybe you pay 50 cents more for 100 pixels, but we found them to be the most reliable pixels uh, out of all the brands we've tried. And so that's why. 
they get our seal of approval um, because they're really on top of that. And that's why we've begun stocking them. So head over to Learning Christmas Lighting Store. We'll have them in stock soon if you're watching this when it comes right out. And uh, check that out. Check out our free guide over at LearnChristmasLighting.com. And of course, if you're looking for more help this season to make your first Christmas light display, now is the time to join the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. And we have a free trial available. We'll link that below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.